Okay, okay. I'm good. good. Yeah. yeah, you're good. We are good. So let me share the screen then this way. It might be recording me. Uh, it might and me. Yeah. Because I need to then publish like description. So the school focuses on that. So you might be already doing the collaborative assignment internship well, how do you do it you know so that's the thing we have a new um career services department mm -hmm. so they are really going they're gonna come and present next year next mm -hmm. fall hi how are you mm -hmm. and like service learning communities first year seminars and so so forth so then we have our um award winners hi how are you award winners and um, they recorded videos short under the strategic goal one which is to increase participation and re retention um, and they recorded the award winners with how do they what HIPs they're using mm -hmm. hips and what um, how do they use it? So we will be watching those videos and I will be looking for a keywords that come to your mind because right now as they are listed, it's just goal one and a name without any description. So there is really not much of an inviting video for you to watch because, okay, why would I watch Patrick, Patrick Kane? Mm -hmm. So this is the third out of the three series and we watched so far five of the videos and we're gonna go for the we will see two three four we will see how many we will go through it so the format will be we'll watch the video then we're gonna discuss it what do you think was the takeaway what things you've heard them say and we will see how we could make a description of this video for the future users. By the way, my name is Magda Piper. I'm ENT uh, adjunct faculty as well as the coordinator for CTE. Oh, I'm Terry McConville in the education department. Jamara Starks from the nursing department. Nice yeah. to meet you. Edla Barrera from the nursing department as well. Nice to meet you. Hello, how are you? Good, how's it going? Good, are you joining us? I am. Perfect. <laughs> For a little while. We've got to get back up, but we've been doing it for a while. Great, great, great. So, without further... By the way, if you want to learn more about uh, high-impact practices, we're going to get more workshops in the fall that really will be zooming in into that. But if you want to reach out to me at Magdalena Piper at Triton, I can send you more in depth. What does that really mean? What does it mean, learning communities? How do they see it? Okay. So if we can introduce ourselves for just one second. My name is Magda Piper, ENT, uh, adjunct faculty, as well as CTE coordinator. Terry McConville, education. Jamara Starks, Nursing Department. Edla Barrera, Nursing Department. John Olinchuk, Business Department. And Dr. Griffin, Chair of the Business Department and Accounting and Credit in the State. Oh, hi, nice. Hey. How nice. Thank you for joining us. So, this workshop is um, we're going to review the videos that were made ooh, by the award winner, winning faculty members and they were filed under goal one. So if you look at this channel on YouTube, it's very non-descriptive. Goal one and the name. Okay, great. What does that mean? What's the goal one? So we want to actually go back and rewrite it and add some, some content to it so people actually if they're looking for a hip that it's internships, they will know where to go. Or learning communities, they will know where we go. So this is part three of the three series. So we already did the first five. We're going to talk today. We will see how many we're going to review it. But we're going to start with Gretchen. 
Please go online. Yes. In our department, we are more career focused. And because of that, I have um, really focused with my students on what type of activities they will be doing once they leave Trent College campus. Whether the student is transferring or just getting their certificate, um, they are out there getting internships, working out in the field. And so to keep them engaged, I try to bring in real life experiences. Another thing is, is that I continually update my courses. Um, business is always changing, and so I also have to change as well. Um, also with technology, technology is changing too. And so because we have students that are now of more of the Z generation, raised with the internet, raised with computers, so I like to, again, bring in real life experiences, get them doing things on the computer, getting them doing things on their phone, uh, different types of games, simulations, things like that I think are um, ways that we can help engage our students in the classroom. I try to bring in diversity into the classroom through the type of, you know, uh, videos, podcasts, uh, things like that, even articles. When I'm looking for articles, there's so many articles in business, but I will look for articles that might have pictures of women and men working together to also bring that equality into the classroom. So it's just, it's always at the forefront of my mind because it's so important, especially when it comes to persistence in the classroom and, and in the courses to completion. I think if students don't feel that they're heard, um, they, that's how we lose them. And so I try to make it really a point, even on day one, to understand who my students are what I started doing in the middle of this semester is now they have a form they fill out and they have to tell me um, you know, what they're enjoying about the class, what they're struggling with in the class, and how, what help they need in the class. And then what I've done is I've partnered them up with um, another student in the classroom. They get to choose that partner. And I've had them exchange emails and phone numbers because I want them to also have that community, that connection in the classroom as well. Um, number one, I have a, an inclusive um, syllabus, which means that in, you know, you go to page one, it tells my students exactly what the course objectives are going to be. When it comes to the assignments, I also link those to what my course objectives are so they, again, understand what they're going to be learning. Because we're a Hispanic serving institution, I also understand um, with that specific culture that family comes first, many of our students are working. So I can't give them an assignment on Tuesday and expect that my students are gonna have that done on Thursday. I, I don't think that's realistic. I don't think that's equitable meeting that student where they're at and understanding that they have you know their their own struggles i think is really important and if we have students that are struggling with writing i build into every paper that they do uh, a 10 point extra credit if they go to the writing center and sit with the writing center and have them help them work through their paper and it's real easy because then the writing center just sends me an email and then i make a list of who gets the extra credit 10 point So my teaching philosophy, it's called the constructive theory, which means that you kind of think outside of the box. Uh, that's a little, that's my theory. I mean, that's my thought process is that I came into education as my second career. Um, and when I walked into the classroom, what I knew was I didn't want to be taught the way that I had been taught when I was in college. I wanted to have, um, you know, my students have more of a relationship with me. I didn't want to stand up there and just sort of speak to the book and then give them tests. If you sit there and you just lecture to your students, they're not engaged, they're, they're not, you know, they're just sitting going through the motions. And if you're an instructor that is not meeting them where they're at and you feel that, you know, I told them this and this is what they have to do and so forth, I think that's how we lose students. Thank you.
bringing in what's literally happening today into the classroom is so much better. And I think as instructors, that's what we have to think about it. Something that I taught two years ago may not be relevant anymore today. So having the opportunity to continue to change um, what you're teaching, I think is really, really important. Formative assessments, I think, are really important. Um, and again, those are low point or no point types of uh, things that I throw out, like uh, maybe like a you know minute paper, right? When they do it, or what was your muddiest thing, something like that. Sometimes they'll do a pretest uh, at before the beginning of a chapter to see what they what they know, and then when I do like a little post test at the end. Um, when I do uh, projects in the class, that's really where they're showing me what they're learning. In my online classes, I do weekly videos. Um, instead of typing out announcements, I now do weekly videos. And so what's really great by doing that is I can sit and I can do a video and if they say, you know, I really didn't understand a lot about XYZ, I can then in the video give a better explanation, give them some other avenues to go and read or, or whatever the case. So, you have to be a proactive teacher and make sure that you know what what's going on in your students lives too um, to know that they're learning as well okay so what did you hear what was the thing if you had to give some description to this video so you would give enough for people to be interested in watching it versus telling them um, too much because we want to leave some suspense in it. Modernized teaching, it addresses some of the I like the, the word, modernized I like the constructive theory as a teaching tool, which is thinking outside the box. Yeah. Making your classroom more diverse, trying to diverse, yeah. make wow. it more inclusive. Informative assessments, I really like that. So it's the small ones. Mm -hmm. Terry and yeah. I, we actually just finished a book here at CT called The Inclusive Teaching. Uh, practices and one of the things they said don't stick with huge summative that it can make it oblated for them do the small tests because everyone you know can get to the point where they wake up in the morning and they don't feel like they can make it the test you know that they, they are not in a right mindset it happens to everyone so if you put all the eggs in one basket, you can, the student can be very quickly discouraged, but with the small formatives, yeah, that's great. Anything from you guys? It sort of came from us, so yeah. <laughs> we might be a little biased, okay. But you, you can see Gretchen, who was my full-time faculty member, mm -hmm. she started as an adjunct for me um, years ago. She's now a tenured faculty member. She came from the business world. And what I look for when I do hire people, that, it, that they've had at least mid-level, if not high-level executive experience. So what she brings into the room, she touched on a little bit there, but real-life uh, situations like mm -hmm. what's happening in the business world today. So what we're trying to do, and what she was talking about, is breathing life into the content of the material you're studying. Mm -hmm. All right? And that's, I think, the key to helping with student engagement. You know, they want to hear about what's going on today in the business world related to what they're reading in the textbook. Right? What's happening in the stock market today? What's happening in the economy? You know, what's what's predicted at the Federal Reserve? How is that going to affect interest rates? How is that going to affect borrowing uh, for buying a car or a home and that type of thing? So we try to do that so that it, again, it brings life into the content of the material rather yeah. than just sort of the dry material there. What does it really mean? And then we use resources like Chicago Cranes, Wall Street Journal, 
um, other resources uh, that we can bring in to show what's actually happening. I also heard her talking about scholarships, internships, apprenticeships that the students are doing, and that's also utilizing our um, services that we have on campus. We finally got back our custom career services with Lorena and Loretta. Um, between the two of them, they started revamping that, so they really focus on it getting students employed, putting a lot of hours, well, first of all, helping them with resume, with headshots. Did you guys know we have the headshot group? You can go and get your professional headshots for free versus pay professional photographer three to five hundred dollars per session. And the eight so, building right outside career services office. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, the, the, the two new People in career services are really good. Yes. They're working very hard. They're working on a paralegal uh, internship course for the summer <coughs> with one of our students. Plus, they'll come to your class. Yep, they did. And come to they've my got class. a great presentation to help students with career writing or, uh, excuse me, resume writing. Right. Yeah, so you should invite them to your classroom. You won't have to come. And they will be also speaking <coughs> in the fall. They will be speaking on the internships, how we can help students to find them. How we can help, how they can help <coughs> us to help the students if because they are not every day in the classroom. So, yeah. So, anything else about the video? What was the aha moment? Was there one aha moment that you were like, oh, I would do that? <coughs> I like that Susan's background because they shot that. That's our conference room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Ashley Gretchen and Angela, they were CTA coordinators prior to me and Tuan. So uh, they ran all the workshops and they did a lot of, uh, uh, they taught a lot of about inclusive syllabus. And they, a lot of ideas from the books actually, they brought it into the workshops. Yes, yeah, so if you're looking for ideas for inclusive, um, syllabus, uh, email to Gretchen or Angela, and um, they will be able to get you there. Yeah. The aha moment for me was 10 points after kind of freezing the writing center. Yeah, I think that's an awesome idea. Yeah. Right, that's a good idea. Yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah, but that was like, a, that's cool. Like, I think a lot and you know, they can do it 24 7. There is a 24 7 that they can submit the paper even at 2 a.m. in the morning. By the time they woke up, people are working on it and giving them things. It's called the uh, right space or something like that, but it's listed under tut uh, tutoring. It's listed how they can submit the paper through that. Yeah, I woke up today morning and I have six unanswered phone calls ele from 11 to midnight. My student was calling. So I put him today and I say, inappropriate in all aspects, unless you're calling your girlfriend or your buddy. No employer, no teacher, between 11 and midnight. And it was like rest, restless, you know? Like, I gonna pick up the phone at midnight. I was in bed by nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next person. Thank you so much for that. So Gabe Guzman. Um, one of the things that I do very frequently is that have to talk to each other. Um, that brings a, a lot more discussion between them and more sharing of information. I also use a lot of technology. I need to keep up with technology because most of my students are young students and they can keep up with other things that I don't know about. So I use uh, whatever I can in terms of technology to engage them. Engaging students in other ways is also important, not just technology-wise. So I use a lot of games in the classroom, games that allow them to tell me exactly how are they understanding the material in a more relaxed way.
make my class inclusive, the very first thing I do uh, about two weeks before we start every semester is that I contact my students with an email. Uh, I invite them to get into our Blackboard shell for the class where there is a discussion board where they need to engage and participate. Uh, the purpose of that discussion board is for them to make a, a short introduction of who they are, what brings them to this class, what is their academic pathway, uh, what things they enjoy, so they can share as much or as little as they want to. Um, to make it uh, complete that, they just don't do their own introduction, they have to read someone's introduction and then reply to that. Um, the very first day of class, I just have another activity that is a little bit more hands on that allows students to express what dreams they have, what goals they have. I think it's important to always ask students what their goals are. And that to me is important because it gives me a little bit of a glance into what they want to do with the individual. And it also allows me to um, tailor some of the activities that I will have. Um, for them throughout the semester. And sometimes uh, it helps me think of activities that I've been seen before. Every group is different, so every group of students will come with something different every semester. Uh, if I can name one thing that I'm doing right now to increase equity is that I changed my entire grading system to a uh, completely gradeless system throughout the semester for the assignment. Of course, in the end, I do have to um, give them a grade. I have to, they have to earn a grade because we are required to give that, that kind of information about the student. But in this case, they will select what grade they want to uh, achieve, what grade they want to earn based on the time that, will, that they will commit to the class based on the number of assignments that they're going to uh, turn in for this class, right? So there is complete transparency. In a way, they're contracting for a grade. And in, in fact, that strategy is called a grade contract. So a student contract for whatever grade they want to uh, earn in the end, fully aware of what it entails, the type of commitment and time and effort that they want to have. My philosophy is based on the, uh, uh, maybe it's an assumption, but I think students learn better from people they care about and from people that they know care about them. So. Uh, I think all of us that, that are in this um, level of teaching that we have to be very empathic, empathic with students. We, we have to be able to put ourselves in their shoes. So if I can establish that atmosphere where students really uh, recognize that I do care about them, um, I think they are more inclined to learn uh, whatever it is I can do. Well, I teach microbiology, so especially now that we're in the middle of a pandemic, and then the relevancy is just there. Open the newspaper, open any news app, uh, turn on the TV, and microbiology is right there. It's hitting all of us on um, uh, you know, faces. Um, so I don't worry about having always relevant examples in my class. Relevancy is one of the main things in the class. So I think students will not be tuned into a class if they don't see exactly how that benefits them or um, how can they use that knowledge uh, you know, in their everyday life. So how do they know that they're learning uh, technology now allows me to have a uh, image measure that based on the level of interaction of the student with the tools that we use. So in essence, there's a report that is generated for that and it tells them how uh, many times you send your confidence in your answers, how uh, many times you were correct. And that actually helps the student uh, really fulfill the confidence that they want to learn in that they really know the material, right? 
uh, which would be very different if uh, the report said or tells them that out of nine, nine times that they say, yes, I'm very confident that these are the answers they are looking for. Because that means that they are not aware, that they don't know uh, the, the concepts, right? Either way, it tells the students exactly where they are. I know what my students are learning when they can show me uh, this is a science class where I teach, so they can show me that they can do things, but that they can repeat how things work, but they can show me uh, with hands on work. And they know how they are learning by looking how the technology levels change over time as they interact more and more with the computer. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. So, what do we think about this? I'm curious to learn about that grade list system. Me too. Mm -hmm. And how the how he incorporates that. So, I'm definitely going to be researching that after this. Yeah. So, I actually do it, and we in this book or previous book, it, and Christopher Klein presented a few times. I assign points, and I tell them for this amount of points, you're going to have a F at the end, or this amount of points is D at the end. But they don't know where they, until they collect the points, they don't know where they are at. They know, OK, I still need more points for the grade. And if they decide at C level, that that's it, that's up to them, you know? But they can see them. So they do not see A, B, C, or D, they see points. So, but I would reach out to him more in that to ask him. He's, um, he came to the, you weren't there, but uh, did you guys come to the agile workshops on Saturday morning? Yeah, if you have it, are you full time? Full time. Okay, so he presented in a full time too. So, if you see him or you know him, he goes in a he's just a great guy. What else? I like how he said um, the students learn from people they care about mm -hmm. and they um, learn from people they know care about them. I really like that. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Mm -hmm. I felt like that it was good. Yeah. It creates that feeling of belonging. And yes, we talked a little bit about it last week. Yes, so the, if they feel that they belong here, they are more likely gonna put some energy to them. Sure. Yeah. I love that he gets his ideas and gets from them. Like they're yeah. young and they bring yeah. new things, and it's true. Like yeah. we don't always know everything that's mm -hmm. new and happening. Yeah. Like I didn't know that Jerry Spinner just died today. <laughs> Did he? Really? Yeah. Like he had the cancer. Really? Oh, no. Wow. wow. My students got it to me. <laughs> I texted my husband. Jerry died. He's like, who? Where Jerry? Who? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was big discussion today. What else did you like that? Um, he asked them their goals. Yep. I like that a lot. Oh, introduction. The, uh, introduction, yeah. So. <laughs> Do, do you know that you can open the Blackboard to students prior to the school start? Yes. So some people don't, but you can. Yeah, I can send you instructions for the, I don't have for Ulta yet, but I can send you for the thing. And actually, Umberto, once he creates the show for you, he sends you instruction how you can release it earlier to yes. students. So like, Otherwise, it's going to open the day, the day, the hour, the minute of where your class starts. I usually open up the moment I get my shell. Excuse me, the first thing I do, I upload the welcome message as an announcement and my syllabus. And then I email them saying you can go and at least view those, these two things. You know, I, if I'm not ready with everything else, I just make it not visible to them, but those two things welcome and um, okay. anything else? What, was, what does he teach? I know my microbiology. microbiology. Micro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And you said this YouTube page is called Goal One. It's yes. So where you find it, I will show you where you can find it. It's not that difficult, but it's not as obvious. So in your Triton portal, when you go to Center of Teaching Excellence, and where you naturally will go to sign up for these workshops, if you scroll it down, here, Strategic Planning Goal 1 Video Recordings. So it's on the page for Center Teaching Excellence, and you're going to see this. And then you scroll it down, and then you see the strategy goal videos. When you click on it, it's going to take you immediately to the channel. I use many methods to uh, engage my students. Uh, I use PowerPoint slideshows, but I have modified them to include lots of color, and they're animated so that uh, the classroom uh, lecture style is very uh, interactive. I'm always thinking of ways uh, to, or things to add to demonstrate concepts. Uh, so, for example, I was grocery shopping in Myers, and I happened to walk past the uh, crafts aisle, and I saw these little uh, styrofoam balls, and I thought, hmm, well, if I paint those, those can represent carbons and hydrogens and so on and so forth. And so now I do this whole demonstration to demonstrate how the, the molecules uh, break apart and how they come together. And uh, the students really seem to uh, respond to that. Uh, it makes more sense to them. The thing that jumped in my mind is how I use what's called a participation score. I give students uh, 100 points to start out with, and then they are challenged to keep those points. They seem to really respond to that challenge. And uh, so there are deductions when they're absent, even if it is a uh, legitimate reason for absence, but then they have uh, to then make up the work, make up the lecture notes, uh, and so on in order to earn back those points. And so I see that the students really respond to that because in the past when students are absent, I noticed that their test scores go down and things like that. And then now that I've instituted that policy, uh, students keep up with the work and, and they do uh, and maintain their, their performance. So I really uh, try to make sure that I get to know the students and their uh, kind of individual needs. Uh, at the beginning of the semester, we, I have them fill out a form and they uh, indicate you know, what resources they have access to, uh, what, uh, what they think will be their uh, challenges to uh, being successful in the class, uh, and, and so on, uh, so that the student uh, understands that I am caring about their particular individual situation uh, and I do my best then to uh, monitor those aspects and uh, speak to students individually uh, if uh, it appears there might be a language issue uh, I um, point them to resources that can help them out that's another thing to making sure that they are very aware of all of the resources they have to support here at Triton So um, equity, I think I just do naturally uh, in the, uh, talking about inclusiveness. Again, it's about that noticing. I think a lot of students, you know, they want to know that their um, teacher cares about them. And not all teachers say they care about their students. But it's about demonstrating that caring uh, by uh, checking in with them uh, if they're struggling, uh, identifying those students that are struggling, approach them separately so on and so forth. So usually my conversations with students are about what is, what's the barrier that's stopping you from being successful. Let's talk about how we can together uh, figure out how to overcome those barriers. I often talk about embracing the struggle. Learning is a struggle. Embrace it. It's supposed to be struggling. Uh, if you're struggling, that means you're learning uh, and challenging yourself. 
So the, the learning and how to learn, uh, again, is one of my uh, main um, goals for students in my class, not only to learn the biology, but learn how to learn. They can take that skills onto other courses throughout their college career or even into their um, professional career. So I try as often as possible to demonstrate why it's important for them uh, to take a biology class. And, and of course, in this time of COVID, uh, that's no brainer in terms of relevancy for, for biology. Some other examples would be when we go up through chemistry, we talk about what those carbohydrates are and the proteins and the, and the lipids. So we go through what a healthy diet is. When you look at that nutritional label, now they know what a saturated fat versus an unsaturated fat is and which one they want to avoid. Even things that, that might not seem relevant to their life. Uh, I just went over photosynthesis, right? How important those uh, plants are. Uh, they're working really hard for us. They're giving our air to breathe. They are giving us our food. Uh, and so, uh, you know, appreciate that. And so I show pictures. I've got pictures of me hugging trees all over the country and my family members. I even get students to send me photos of them hugging trees. So uh, I know how they're, uh, that they're learning uh, during lectures. I include review questions. So we go over, uh, they answer the question on their own. Then I poll them. It doesn't have to be, you know, technology involved. Uh, I just have them close their eyes and then raise their hands when they, uh, for the uh, correct answer. And then we go over them. Now, many uh, people do practice exams. Maybe the way I do it is a little differently. Uh, I do, again, choose questions on the exams that students struggle on most. They go on to the practice exam, so the practice exam does not include all questions in the exam, uh, but uh, they, that gives them an opportunity to struggle and make those mistakes before the exam. So after the first exam, I do uh, have them do what's called a study assessment. So those are a series of questions that ask uh, yes and no questions, basically, saying, uh, do you check your emails? Are you checking Blackboard regularly? Do you know when assignments are due? And things like that, uh, so they can kind of assess uh, um, you know, where they need to improve. So many ideas. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time in the summer to incorporate the, all. I would have to strip 90% of my stuff. Embracing the struggle. I really like. That. I like that. I one love too. that. I love that. I wrote that down. Mm -hmm. You're struggling. You're learning. It's so true. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that to my students. Uh huh. <laughs> it's true. So two keywords, yeah, two that's... philosophies. One was with Gabe saying. Uh, the students learn better from the people they know or care about and knowing that people care about them. And then she, in two times, she was saying about the caring portion. So that's a huge impact, the care. The With care. that philosophy, it can like let students know to be more active in class. And I try to tell my students that like, it's okay, there's no wrong answer. Mm -hmm. yes. The wrong answer is not any answer. Yes. So that can motivate them to be more active in class. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, you know, you getting the answer wrong, we're gonna say the right answer and you won't get it wrong with you. It's just enhancing your learning. Mm -hmm. so. But why are they scared from telling us that? Right. Because probably they were ridiculed mm -hmm. or even say just, Right, right. Sit down, it's too stupid to answer. This. Right. You've heard that story, you know. So if you say, well, it's a great guess, it's mm -hmm. a great answer, but let's revisit something right. else, you know, kind of bring them into the different mindset yeah. to to break that PTSD right. COVID yeah. from some schools. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And just identifying those barriers and checking in with the students too. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. What's stopping you from being successful in this course? What can we do to get you that country? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The practice exam. That was 
Yeah. Do you ever do practice okay. exam? Uh, Gretchen does the same. Yeah. Hmm. Before, well, she does different. She does pre chapter quiz. Okay. Yeah. So it's slightly different, but this one is the practice. Um, I like the study assessment. Yeah. So they can actually test up that they are not doing anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's the big struggle, you know, of students checking emails. If it's not text, they are not checking it. And they are like, what? When did that happen? Um, someone else said to check with them how many hours or how, what they prep for the midterm or finals. Yeah. How do they prep? Some of them said, opening the book. Well, why is that? Yeah. Are you surprised that you like a good grade? Right. When you don't open. Okay, any other I uh, the hundred um, participation points was interesting. Yeah. 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 I actually gotta reach out to her about that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd like to know more detail. Exactly. Uh -huh. So you have the names and when you type it in, do they go like pop out at Chitin that video? I everyone's Gretchen gave I haven't met her but I believe she's still here. Okay. So um, because you're struggling with your participation this year. Right. So that might right. be another method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like Yeah. So I would reach out because she mentioned the attendance part of it. Well, I have a students who breathe my air and do nothing and expect that I'm going to give them good grade. I don't want that, you know. I don't want to give them keep 100% the 100 points. I always think it's hard to like grade our participation because a student can say, well, I need to answer a question this week. So it's like, how do you... Well, that's why right. I want to see how yeah. she does it because yeah. you can have introvert. I have yeah. autistic yeah. kids in my yeah. class, and he is very, very scared of the final presentation when they have yeah. to present. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's discuss it. If your level, comfort level is yeah. there, I'm not going to put you there. Right. I'm not going to also take away points from him right. because yeah. he has autism, and good, I know it. You know, mm -hmm. so. Cool. Anything else, or do we want to squeeze one more? I think it's six more minutes, another one. Want to go to the next? Okay. So, Terry, you might know Bill. He is our rep for the adjuncts. Bill Justice. He's also the head of the fire safety. Oh, I do get emails from that. Yes, him. and mm -hmm. anytime there is a pool for union, it comes from him. We'll try to put some of the stressors on of people talking to the uh, to the EMT students while they're providing care, trying to distract them, the patient being dis disruptive of some sort. Try to implicate or replicate the stress that the student would see help them give a better understanding and better educational environment. So when our students leave here, they come out with a better experience and better prepared to handle the emergencies they're going to see. In the fire science arena, the last class we came out, the capstone class, closes the circle and brings the students into a practicum and internship environment in the firehouses. So they're riding along with the crews, not entering any dangerous environment, but watching, partaking in the training, the house cleaning, the camaraderie within a firehouse to better understand the dynamics of how emergency services are delivered. We need to ensure our students are taught that when you respond to an emergency, you're going to treat the person and be inclusive and help and be cognitive of everyone's needs. Every individual basis of who they are and what they are have different needs, different traditions, different fears based on uh, conceptualized environments they are in and grew up in. 
need to be aware of that and work with that to help them know that we, the first responders, and them as the students when they come into the first responder field, are there to help them. And at the end, we are successful when they get the help they need. The first thing, equity in the classroom, I look at is making sure every student knows that they're valuable. Sometimes students feel disvalued when they look at their grade, they got a lower grade and other students are, are cheering, they got the A, and other students maybe got the lowest grade. The biggest thing is to remind everyone everyone's equal and push that person who's at the bottom, their team partner, team people together, so everyone feels valuable. My teaching philosophy is everyone is successful. If someone's starting not to feel successful, empower them to be successful. If half my class is not making a career field, I was not successful as a teacher. If my entire class walks up, jumps in this career field, is in this career field today because of me, because of the push I gave them, then I was successful as an instructor and teacher. Our students have to do clinical science for the AMD class on the ambulance and in the, uh, in the emergency room. The ambulance they're at are fire department ambulances and private ambulances. Our fire science students do clinical internships in the firehouse as well. These opportunities give them the, re, the view of the reality of what they're going to go on every day, what they're going to do, what their job is, and really how glamorous the job can be and how much they're going to love the job. You know, the students can get by down looking at all this classwork thinking, I don't know if I can do this. Well, once they walk in that environment, being in the name, once being in the roots or being in the firehouse, the reality is it's they can do it. And the job is fun. The, the, the career field of being a first responder is very rewarding, very dynamic and fun and helpful to society. And once the student realizes those things, they will want to be in spirit building more and hopefully they'll push them to be even more successful. I know my students are learning about multiple ways. One, grades. We need to ensure that they have the grades to move on because licensure exams are big. If you can't pass a licensure exam, you can't act with license. But two, when we have the hands-on practical, when you give the students a scenario, let them run with it. It's great to see when you first start working hands-on practicals with them, they're stumbling. You know, you try to build them up, build them step by step. You know, remember airway, remember breathing for the EMT students. And when you start getting to the part where covering medical or trauma emergencies, when all of a sudden you see the student just run with it, instructor, myself, no one has to give them clues. Now they're just finishing the assessment, chugging along, doing the proper treatments. That's the satisfaction here when you see they were successful and they've achieved it. Students need to hear from us after a test, you know, the day after a test, you start to come in. You guys knocked this out of the park. You guys are succeeding. You're doing well. You're being successful. Let's keep this up. You guys got the, keep the same momentum up. You guys have passed. And at the end, I will see all of you becoming licensed DMCs or certified firefighters. So I would strongly encourage, if you didn't come for the previous session, to review the first five and the last one, which is Patrick's. And there will be more coming up because we had two more this year that received the award. So we're gonna, they're going to be putting um, the videos. Hopefully, by then, we will have much better description than go on, Patrick, okay, okay. you know, so we're going to at least include for sure um, those questions and then just keywords what they are talking. So what about Bill? What was everyone is successful? Yeah. Yeah, I I've heard him also 
pairing up the student, uh, the one that doesn't do very well with the yeah. one that does better, so they bring each other yeah. up. So that's a, another yeah. one. That's good. But my, I think my biggest surprise was that the students are actually going to the firehouses as a part of the mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. You guys did, yeah. And ENTs? Mm -hmm. In like his program, our program also has a licensure exam that our students are currently struggling with. And he mentioned that hands yeah. on practical. Yeah, hands on. And I feel like we could probably incorporate that so we have a little bit more than a summative yeah. final exam. Maybe yeah. a real world situation with the simulator yeah. models and that, which would be nice more of those. I think having that screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was another thing to create that stressful environment so yeah. they actually learn how yeah. to be. Because they can happen in real life. So if they're dealing with like simulator models in the lab, they're com more, they might be a little bit more comfortable in the real world situation. Mm -hmm. How good are you seeing? I've never seen it. Have you seen it? We have a mixture. We have high fidelity simulators. Like we have a, a male mannequin that literally has chest movement when he breathes. He can cry, he can sweat, he can vomit, he can urinate, he can bleed. Poop too? No. He doesn't have a rectum yet. Oh, is that <laughs> a woman that can give birth? Yeah, we what? have another one that gives birth. Really cool. Wow, that's really cool. I wish I I want to get your email. That. Yes. Yeah. Can we do that. <laughs> we can, a, we can show a you. Thing next year. Yeah. Uh huh. Huh. That would be that. That would be my project. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. That, do that. That might be. Oh, sign up for three sixty so we can do it. Yeah. So here to clear three sixty. So it's Tammy. You know you participate. So explain it the way you understand this because I know the theory behind it. But. Well, you just get a partner that's not your department. So I was with. Dr. Richard Chan in biology, and so I went to watch his human pathophysiology class, which was awesome. And we got to talking, and somehow he talked about the cadaver lab, and I was like, "Did you train him? I said, "Do you want to come?" So I went, and he, it was amazing. It was yeah, super cool, and um, I would totally do that. So but yeah, that would so be a cool class for people to sign up to like here yeah, to go yeah. see what the, that is. You know, I didn't know that was there. It's really cool. I would do that for sure. So yeah. for, for in order for CTE to do it, it has to benefit the student. So how would you put the spill on it that the vice president will know that it benefits the student? We I teach, I teach human growth and development. Well, I'll take that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so that's a great thing for uh -huh. 60 next year. Can we have a, a nine-month-old infant, mm -hmm. and we have a five-year-old pediatric simulator, too. So maybe it's relevant. Mm -hmm. you can talk about students there. I'm going to say probably a little bit like, yes, I'll see it. Well, you know what? That's the thing. Maybe you can do the field trip down to the lane, like to the department with your students so they can see the that, you know? Because that's part of the aging and growth and everything. For sure. Yeah. How how real is the birth? She will deliver automatically. There's she has mechanisms inside of her, and the head will be delivered, and then the rest of the body will be pulled out. Like so you can watch like the cervix dilates. No, her cervix is fully dilated. Okay, okay. So she's complete, but um, what happens is she's contracting. We have a digital monitor next to her, so we can measure her contractions oh, cool. and the fetal heart rate. And from the instructor side, I can program it to say deliver within five contractions, uh -huh. or I can deliver now in the heat of the moment, or if I want to liven it up and the students are off guard, they're not uh -huh. ready for it. So I can speak through the mannequin for the patient and yell, like, you know, <laughs> I feel something down there, oh my God. And then they look and I deliver the head, and then they're like, they don't know what to do. So it's so cool. We're going. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I might have time? a. So Bill's, uh, there's an adjective that works with Bill Vince. Yeah. I don't remember Vince's last name. He came for Laredal, that's the manufacturer of our simulators, training with us, and um, we made him deliver a baby. So let's see if I can. 
find it quickly, but um, we go and go. Yeah. Then I take a picture of your email addresses I can email you to. Did you know that, Laura? Did you know that they have simulators that the woman gives birth? There's simulators for what? The woman gives birth. No, oh, nursing department. Yeah. yeah. Has contraction and they can program if it's like deliver after five contraction or now. <laughs> or and then they have a male that actually vomits or pee, pee and stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So here's oh, Finn so getting ready to oh. Oh deliver the baby, and that's the baby that comes out. He has umbilical cord, and there's a placenta. And we could we this baby wasn't greased up all the way. We had fake blood and, oh and secretions that so cool. the baby too. I don't want to remember <laughs> all that. Stuff. Well, I only saw it from up here. <laughs> 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 My doctor wanted to put the mirror, and I said, please don't. Same. I was like, no. Yeah. Yeah. No one has seen it. No one has seen it. I've been devastated for my entire life. Yeah. 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 Yeah.